Far from advocating a flat earth, both Plato and Aristotle assumed that the earth is a sphere. Wherever their influence held sway, belief in a round earth was not seriously contested. For Aristotle, the spherical earth lies in the center of the universe. Surrounding the earth are giant celestial spheres, the large sphere containing the fixed stars rotates around the Earth every 24 hours, while the planets are carried in spheres around the Earth at different times. Don't confuse an Earth in the middle of the universe with a flat Earth. The Aristotelian cosmos was centered upon the Earth, but the Earth was a globe. Aristotle's theory of gravity stipulated that the natural motion of every earthy body is straight down. So if earthy bodies are falling straight down, then they will compact on every side. Aristotle's theory of gravity required the earth to be as round as a globe. Let us take a quick look at the history of the notion of spherical earth. The earliest written mention of a spherical earth comes from ancient Greek sources. There is no account of how the sphericity of the earth was discovered. A plausible explanation is that it was the experience of the travelers that suggested such an explanation for the variation in the observable altitude and the change in the area of circumpolar stars, a change that was quite drastic between Greek settlements around the eastern Mediterranean particularly those between the Nile Delta and Crimea. In the Historis, written between 431 to 425 BC, Phoenicians knew about the spherical model. However, nothing certain about their knowledge of geography and navigation has survived. Pythagoras. Early Greek philosophers alluded to a spherical earth, though with some ambiguity. Pythagoras, 6th century BC, was among those said to have originated the idea, but this might reflect the ancient Greek practice of ascribing every discovery to one or another of the ancient wise men. Plato. Plato, between 427 and 347 BC, traveled to southern Italy to study Pythagorean mathematics. When he returned to Athens and established his school, Plato also taught his students that Earth was a sphere, though he offered no justifications. Aristotle Aristotle, between 384 to 322 BC, was Plato's prize student and the mind of the school. Aristotle observed there are stars seen in Egypt and Cyprus which are not seen in northerly regions. Since this could only happen on a curved surface, he too believed Earth was a sphere. India Greek ethnographer Mekastionos at 300 BC was a scholar and has been interpreted as stating that the contemporary Brahmins believed in a spherical Earth as the center of the universe in India during that time. Eratosthenos Erastosthenos, a Greek astronomer from Hellenistic Libya between 276 and 194 BC, estimated Earth's circumference around 240 BC. Roman Empire From the Greek origins, the idea of spherical Earth, along with much of Greek astronomical thought, slowly spread across the globe and ultimately became the adopted view in all major astronomical traditions. In the West, the idea came to the Romans through the lengthy process of cross-fertilization with Hellenistic civilization. Many Roman authors such as Cicero and Pliny refer to their works to the rotundity of the earth as a matter of course. India the works of classical Indian astronomer and mathematician Aryabhatta between 476 and 550 AD deal with sphericity of the earth and the motion of the planets. 
the final two parts of his Sanskrit magnum opus, the Arya Bhatia, which were named the Kala Kriya, Reckoning of Time, and the Gol Sphere, state that the Earth is spherical and that its circumference is 4,967 Vodhyanas in modern units, this is 39,968 kilometers, that's about 24,835 miles, close to the current equatorial value of 40,075 kilometers or 24,901 mile. Middle Ages Knowledges of the sphericity of the Earth survived into the medieval corpus of knowledge by direct transmission of the texts of Greek antiquity and via authors such as Seville and Beda Vernaldals. Early Islamic scholars recognized Earth sphericity, leading Muslim mathematicians to develop spherical trigonometry in order to further mensuration and to calculate the distance and direction from any given point on the earth to Mecca. This is determined the Qibla or Muslim direction for prayer. Around 830 AD, Khalif al-Mamun commissioned a group of Muslim astronomers and geographers to measure the distance from Tadmur to Raqqa in modern Syria. They found the cities to be separated by one degree of latitude and the meridian arc distance between them to be 66 two third miles and thus calculated the Earth's circumference to be 24,000 miles. Another estimate given by his astronomers was 56 two third Arabic miles, 100.8 km per degree, which corresponds to a circumference of 40,248 km, very close to the currently modern values of 111.3 km per degree and 40,068 km circumference, respectively. Birioni Abu Rehan Birioni 973 to 10,048 AD used a new method to accurately complete the Earth's circumference by which he arrived at a value that was close to modern values for the Earth's circumference. His estimate of 6,339.6 km for the Earth radius was only 31.4 km less than the modern mean value of 6,371 km. In contrast to his predecessors, who measured the Earth's circumference by sighting the Sun simultaneously from two different locations, Biruni developed a new method of using trigonometric calculations based on the angle between a plane and mountaintop. This yielded more accurate measurement of Earth's circumference and made it possible for a single person to measure it from a single location. The concept of spherical Earth has been around since the ancient Greek civilization prior to 431 BC. Launched on 17th March 2009, Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer GOCE, is bringing about a whole new level of understanding of Earth's model of geoid, which is the surface of an hypothetical global ocean in the absence of tides and currents, shaped only by gravity. To everybody's surprise, such mapping revealed that the Earth is not a perfect sphere. To everybody's surprise, the Earth rather look like an egg. Nevertheless, the egg-shaped Earth concept is not a modern discovery. More than 1400 years ago, the ancient text of the Quran revealed such shape of our planet.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنازعات غرقا والناشطات نشطا والسابحات سبحا فالسابقات سبقا فالمدبرات أمرا يوم ترجف الراجفة تتبعها الرادفة قلوب يومئذ واجفة أبصارها خاشعة يقولون أئنا لمردودون في الحافرة أئذا كنا عظاما نخرة قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة فإنما هي زجرة واحدة فإذا هم بالساهرة هل أتاك حديث موسى إذ ناداه ربه بالواد المقدس طوى اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى فقل هل لك إلى أن تزكى وأهديك إلى ربك فتخشى فأراه الآية الكبرى فكذب وعصى ثم ثم أدبر يسعى فحشر فنادى فقال أنا ربكم الأعلى فأخذه الله نكال الآخرة والأولى إن في ذلك لعبرة لمن يخشى أأنتم أشد خلقا أم السماء بناها رفع سمكها فسواها وأغطش ليلها وأخرج ضحاها والأرض بعد ذلك دحاها أخرج منها ماءها ومرعاها والجبال أرساها متاعا لكم ولأنعامكم فإذا جاءت الطام الكبرى يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى فأما من طغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى نفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى يسألونك عن الساعة أيان مرساها فيما أنت من ذكراها إلى ربك منتهاها إنما أنت منذر من يخشاها كأنهم يوم يرونها لم يلبثوا إلا عشية أو ضحاها